Did you know that kids can learn Robert's Rules of Order by participating in 4-H? Well, here with me today is Melinda Sowers, 4-H agent, to tell us all about it. So welcome, Melinda. Thank you, Jan. I'm happy to be here. Great. So we've heard about Robert's Rules of Order, but really may not understand what that means. So can you tell us what that means? Sure. Um, we've probably all been to those meetings where people just go on and on. The dominant voices are the only ones that get to speak. Maybe business did or didn't get accomplished. And so Robert's Rules of Order is a simple way to make sure the parliamentary procedure is followed so that, one, we have orderly meetings, two, that everybody gets a voice, and three, so that the majority rules important things to know. So how do kids use this particular skill in 4-H? Well, in 4-H, we really encourage our youth to engage Robert's Rules of Order in their club meetings. Our 4-H clubs elect officers, the president chairs the meeting, secretaries taking the minutes, and all of the youth pretty quickly learn how to make a main motion, okay. to enter a motion to conduct business. Okay. We have some um, helpful um, tools for them. We have our Robert's Rules in brief that we provide to our leaders, nice. which gives them um, kind of guides, tables, scripts, references, okay. and then even something very simple like this, some cue cards that oh. we provide for our kids so that they can hold our this life. up and the, the kids know what to say. Right. Because when they don't know what to say, maybe they're going to sit there and think, oh, I don't want to say the wrong thing. Yeah, I look silly. Nervous. But we give them this guide so that they know that first they're going to make a motion, then they are going to discuss it, and then they're going to vote on it. And so the majority rules, and they understand it's a very simple way for them to start to get engaged and get confident. Right, I love it. Um, I remember growing up, we had a lot of opportunities either with you know community or with our church to do this, and it just kind of faded. And then you know when I got involved again, I'm like, oh yeah, parliamentary procedures, that is a thing. Mm -hmm. So what other opportunities do kids have to use these skills for civic engagement or with Robert's Rules? Well, in addition to 4-H clubs, we also have our leadership club that's a countywide program and they can even go deeper in learning how to use these skills. And at the state level, we have executive boards and state council and 4-H legislature, which is a program where our youth go to Tallahassee, actually sit in the big comfy chairs and they're on the floor um, of the legislature conducting business and they have to learn from start to finish how to do that. Wow, awesome. So is it just a particular club, club you said it was? Leadership? We have leadership club at the county level, but then at state level, we have executive board, state 4 H council, and then the 4 H legislature. And this program. is something that happens annually? Yes. Okay, awesome. So if I'm a parent or someone in the community and they, you know, feel like their kids want to be involved and they need to learn about civics engagement and they want to be a part of 4 H, how would they learn more about that? They would reach out to us and we could connect them with a 4 H club that would be a good fit for them. In August, we're going to start re-enrolling for the fall, so sometime over summer or early August would be a good time to reach out. And we really want our youth to understand, have these skills so that they can engage in civic um, activities as adults. Right, and also at their schools, because if there's any kind of clubs at school, sometimes they still follow this, right? That's true. They could use this also with their um, club activities. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Melinda, for being here. Mm -hmm. Now you know how 4-H contributes to youth development through civic engagement and how you can get your child involved in 4-H.